Well, today we've got an all new show, all new recipes, and um, they're just fun and easy. It's the best of because we're celebrating today. Um, I was reminded this morning that uh, we are going into our sixth season. So we've been doing this for now coming up on six years. So thank you so much for um, watching us and uh, liking what we do. You know, it takes us, we have a small team, but we're really, really proud of the 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 show every day and uh, not that we're perfect my goodness we've burned the nuts i've burned the nuts a lot of times on this show but um you know, boy it is just super duper great fun and christine the happy cookie lady surprised me this morning and dropped that off um, at my desk so christine and all the great chefs that we have on our show thank you thank you thank you for coming and being a part of it um, we really do think that we're doing something special here and in Green Bay. So, all right, enough talk. Don't want to get too mushy. Uh, we are celebrating the best of today. So we're going to share some of our uh, best recipes. And I thought I'd start with one of my favorite casserole recipes. You know me, if you've been watching the show for six years, I love a good casserole. I think sometimes casseroles get a bad rap, but not mine. Let me tell you, I kind of like taking those church casseroles that um, we grew up with and taking them to another notch. Uh, and this one's fun. What I like about casseroles is that you can make them ahead of time. Um, and, you know, it's all in there. So in most cases, you just, you know, bring the casserole to the table, maybe toss a salad together and some bread and call it a day. And these days, life is so crazy busy that that's really the way I roll. So this one's fun. It's my beef chow mein casserole, and it's one of my family's favorites. If you haven't made this one, you need to because it's yummy, something a little different. So sip of coffee, and I'm going to get to work on recipe number one. Okay, so I'm going to start with two pounds of lean ground beef and get a big old skillet. And I'm going to use my chop and stir, which I happen to love, just to start to kind of break up the beef a little bit. I actually fired up the grill last night, talking about casseroles, but I am still enjoying the grilling weather. And I stopped by one of those farm stands. And let me tell you, the tomatoes are still unbelievable. I, I picked up like giant tomatoes like this last night. And then I think uh, the sweet corn season's finally coming to an end. Oh my gosh, is it good. We rolled our corn in the butter and I said to Bob in Ireland, I said, this is probably gonna be the last of it. So we savored every minute. It did steaks on the grill and baby red potatoes and fresh dill. And it's like that last taste of summer. Well, who knows? Sometimes there can be some really, really great days in October. So hopefully there will be but I don't think the sweet corn will still be around. Okay, so I'm gonna add some onion to this. About a cup of diced onion, finely diced onion. Let me check on the casserole that we've got in the oven. Ooh, yeah. I'll turn it down just a little bit. I don't want the, this one has some really fun crispies on top and I don't want those crispies to get too burned, They're too dark. Too crispy, I should say. I'm going to add some celery. And my recipe for this has some green, diced green pepper in it. If you don't like green pepper or the family doesn't like it, not a big deal, just leave it out. Some people, some kiddos don't do green pepper. I get it. In Anne's case, she doesn't do onion or pepper. But this is a really good casserole, Anne. You've got to try it. So I'm just going to dice this up kind of fine. A couple of things to talk about. Um, we have our big night out was last Monday. And oh my gosh, our September big night out. It was so fun. I think I'm still recovering from it. It was such a, a neat night. Great wines, great food. And we're planning another one in November. So um, details still coming out on that one. Check our website or keep watching. I'll give you more details very, very soon, but mark your calendars. November 4th is the date for that one, and hopefully you'll come. This last one was a blast. Okay, so in goes our pepper with our onion and our celery. Get it all in there. My 
My son Riley has fall break from college this weekend. So I know, can you believe it? Like I want to be a college student. They have more breaks than, it's crazy. <laughs> Seems like I just, I just dropped him off. No, wait, he's coming home already? But he wants to come home and probably do his laundry, um, <laughs> get a good meal or two. Actually, they've got great food at his school. But I know, they get a nice four day weekend. But he's loving school, loving being back in college, and we love the fact that he's there. <laughs> House is so much cleaner. If you have a college student, you know what that's all about. No, but we miss him. Last night we were sitting around the dinner table and we thought, oh, he would have loved this dinner. It's just not the same having one missing from the table. Okay, I opened up a can while I was talking um, of sliced or you could do diced water chestnuts. I like to not only get that water out of the can, drain it, but then rinse them a little bit just so that you don't have that kind of tin can taste. I love water chestnuts. I like to add some fun different crunchies and different ingredients to my casseroles. So this is something a little bit un unexpected in here, which is why I love throwing those in here. I like putting water chestnuts in like a tuna salad, chicken salad. It's Nice to use them in, you know, food other than Chinese food, although this is a chow mein casserole, so, and you'll see why. We're going to add some soy sauce, a couple tablespoons. Just going to eyeball it. We're not using salt, we're using soy sauce. Two cans of cream of mushroom soup, and you know me, I love my cream of mushroom soup. Just kind of binds the whole casserole together. Get a little. I think I'll just move it to the uh, bottom rack. And you know, that's a good point. When you're doing crunchies on a casserole, if they get a little dark, just put them to the bottom if the casserole's not quite done. That's why, I, in most cases, I like to throw my crunchies on the casserole. Uh, last 15, 20 minutes of cooking so that the casserole cooks through, but your toppings don't get too dark. All right. And in my cookbooks, both my cookbooks, I give a lot of different tips and tricks, and that's one of them. Um, if you're freezing casseroles, and that's the other thing I love about casseroles, the Sunday is usually my big cooking day, so, you know, I'll throw a casserole or two together for the week, make, maybe make a big batch of soup. Maybe if I'm making a casserole, a lot of times instead of one, I'll make two being that you know, I'm dirtying the pans anyway and I have the ingredients anyway. So if I'm going to freeze a casserole, I never put the crunchies on. I, I wait to put the cheese and the crunchies on top until after it's out of the freezer and thawed. Nobody wants soggy crunchies either. You want it to be nice and crunchy. Soggy crunchies? That doesn't make me, yeah, no. You know what I'm saying. Okay, so I've got my cream of mushroom soup in here, my water chestnuts, my soy sauce, and I'm going to do some rice. Uh, recipe calls for two to three cups of white or wild rice. I happen to love wild rice, especially this time of year in fall. So it's just going to, you know, create a little more depth of flavor. But that's another one of those things. If you're making rice for, you know, a side, think about making some extra and turning it into this casserole. I'm always thinking of ways to, and then some beef stock. Uh, just, you know, cook once and get a few different meals out of it. So if I'm making mashed potatoes, which, you know, make some extra, turn it into mashed potato soup. Like a loaded potato soup. And in this case, if you're serving, you know, grilling chicken and you're doing rice as a side dish, make some extra rice and you can throw it into this casserole. It's starting to look and smell really good. I'm going to do a little more. You know me, I don't like a dry casserole either. So you'll notice a lot of my casseroles start with what seems like a little bit of liquid, a little extra liquid. They may seem a little bit runny. But then once you get them into the casserole dish and they bake, and in this case, especially if a casserole has rice, potatoes, or pasta in it, um, it really tends to soak up that liquid. And then you'll be left with a dry as a desert casserole. And that is no fun. So there's another tip to making a good casserole. Make sure that you've got lots of, um, you know, liquid in that. Think about baking it and, um, you know, making sure it's nice and creamy. Spray those casserole dishes big time. 
they can be deadly to clean. Then in goes the works. So we used a little bit bigger of it. This really should be a nice big 9 by 13 casserole dish. And then I like to bake it covered uh, for about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes uh, at 350. Then uncover it, and here's the fun part. We're going to put some crunchy, or we already did with the uh, one in the oven, um, those, uh, just a, a nice big bag. I don't like to skimp on the crunchies either of those chow mein noodles. Uh, they come in a bag or the can, and you throw those on the last 20 minutes or baking or so of baking. Another thing to remember, if you're making a casserole ahead of time and you're putting it in the refrigerator and you're going to bake it when you come home from work, allow some extra bake time. Uh, an ice cold casserole out of the fridge is going to take, of course, longer to bake than one that you just assemble and then bake right then. So come back with me. I love to serve this with a nice big salad and call it a day. In this case, you don't even need bread because you've got those great crunchies on the top. So this is going to have the crunch of the chow mein noodles, um, the crunch of the water chestnuts, and it's just, you know, that rib stick and kind of comfort food, perfect for fall. One of my, my family's favorite casseroles. And you can get the recipe, by the way, on our website. Coming up, some more fun ideas for fall. We're going to show you how to take that mantle, fireplace mantle, and really make it look its best for fall. And, you know, we're talking fall, but winter will be here before you know it. Um, we're going to talk about uh, a really cool escape to someplace nice and warm this winter. And speaking of escaping, the Kohler Food and Wine Festival is coming up in just a couple weeks. We're going to tell you all about it, some of the big celebrity chefs that are coming that you could actually meet in person. Very cool. So stay with us. We'll be back 